Last year it won a special citation for excellence at Toronto's Festival of Festivals and in the spring the film was acquired for the National Gallery's permanent collection. This week it's being screened halfway around the globe at the Sydney Film Festival. The city of Moose Jaw is located in the center of southern Saskatchewan, midway between Calgary and Winnipeg on the Trans-Canada Highway and CP Main Line. Thanks for that. The movie, which combines documentary and experimental techniques, is a collage of images and sounds of Moose Jaw. It was a 14-year labor of love for Hancocks, who began the project as a look back at the place where he grew up. The film is bracketed by a train journey and explores what happened to small Canadian cities like Moose Jaw when the importance of the railroad gave way to the jet age. Thousands of jobs are gone. Ottawa announced deep budget cuts to Beale last spring. But it wasn't until today that Transport Minister Benoit Bouchard revealed just where those cuts would be. Now, Hancock says, giant moose statues and museums are all that's left of Moose Jaw's once thriving economy and prairie culture. Rick Hancock joins us now from the National Gallery in Ottawa. Hi, Rick. Hi. Now, the film is, is called Moose Jaw, and the subtitle, I think, it tells a lot about what the film is about. There's a future in our past, which I take it you're saying with a bit of irony. Yes, um, I'm now dropping that as the, as the subtitle. I'm just simply calling the film Moose Jaw because I think uh, people might think that it's simply a, a promotional film or an educational <laughs> film about Moose Jaw. It's, it's, very, it's really quite a subjective film, but uh, that had come from a, a Main Street renovation project in Moose Jaw in the early 80s, and that had been the model for that project. But I realized during the making of the film that it, over the 14-year um, course of the film, it had in effect become my own motto in that... Um, the film was really about my own past more than it was simply about Moose Jaw. Mm -hmm. And you say it took you 14 years, which is astonishing. I mean, this was a labor of love for you, obviously. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> it did become somewhat of an, of an obsession. Uh, when I began the project in 1978, I had no idea it was going to turn into this. But um, I had originally begun uh, the film uh, on a trip out west, uh, and uh, I hadn't seen Moose Jaw for about 20 years, having left at age 12 in 1959. Mm -hmm. And I just had a camera with me and uh, began um, recording uh, the landscape of my childhood. And um, every few years, I would go back and uh, I would keep collecting images. Now, I, I hasten to add, I, I've, I've done more films than just this in the last 14 years. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you have, this hasn't been your job for 14 years. That's right. Yeah. I've, I've made about six or seven others. But this has been on the back burner, and, and it's been an interesting way that it came together. It slowly developed, and um, it seemed to take that much time to uh, begin to notice the changes that uh, took place in, in Moose Jaw, in Saskatchewan, and in, in Canada and in my own uh, maturing uh, in relation to the project and uh, in relation to uh, the place of my childhood. And, and the changes had not been uh, for the good. Well, uh, I, I remember a moose job, the sort of post-war boom era of the, of the 50s. It was still a time when um, there was a, still a pioneering spirit out west. Nobody ever thought about the past. There, there weren't museums at that time. Um, but there have been some economic hard times. Uh, it's no secret. Uh, the, uh, there, they had some bad drought uh, for many years on the prairies. Uh, the farmers getting no prices at all. And uh, that's affected Moose Jaw. Another problem, of course, is that Moose Jaw um, is just Regina as the capital city was just uh, built too close to, to Moose Jaw. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moose Jaw has suffered as a result of this sort of government largesse in comparison. But um, it, Moose Jaw still has the air base there, which is, uh, um, it seems to be one of the biggest industries. But um, there have been other uh, changes. I think the population has stayed about the same. Um, but it, it, it's quite a change from what I remember, and I'm trying to deal with my, uh, uh, my childhood memories and my difficulties in, in, uh, in adjusting to the Moose Jaw of the present, although people still have to live there, and I respect that, and I show that in the film. There's a parade scene at the end of the film where everybody comes out in the street for the annual Kinsman uh, International Band Festival, mm -hmm. and I'm stuck up still in my hotel room behind the window, and at this point totally alienated from Moose Jaw because there's nobody there that uh, I know anymore. Yeah. Now, the train plays a pivotal role in this, partly because Moose Jaw used to be, I guess, a cross roads for the train and when via pulled out I mean that was devastating to Moose Jaw I take it. 
No, oh, definitely. Uh, it was a town that was really built by the CPR, uh, CPR along the, um, the uh, CPR rail line that was being built in the uh, 1880s. Uh, and it continued to be uh, the main employer in Moose Jaw. There's still quite a few people who worked for it. It's still a freight uh, center. Uh, it was also the uh, terminal for the Sioux Line coming up out of Chicago. And uh, there are many rumors about, uh, in the gangster era, how they would uh, sort of escape uh, from uh, Chicago and go to Moose Jaw's uh, infamous River Street including Al Capone. Wow. Um, but um, uh, as the jet age uh, became a more popular uh, way for people to travel, uh, passenger service really went down. Uh, I had continued to take the train out there partly because um, the train is so important uh, in, in Moose Jaw, but also in my own uh, childhood. Every summer we would take the train down to Ontario to a, my grandfather's cottage. And also I've become uh, sort of a white-knuckled flyer because there was a very serious air accident, uh, a collision of the skies of Moose Jaw uh, with a uh, TCA plane in 1954. Yes, which, it, which you show in the film. There are all these right. clippings of this disaster. and I mean, it really yeah. it must have obviously scarred you. Yeah, so uh, it, it had an effect, and uh, that's dealt with in the film. And throughout the film, there's this kind of um, sense of imminent crashing. Uh, about to take place. We hear sounds uh, of crashes occasionally in the soundtrack and uh, reference to um, transportation and, of course, the air travel taking over from train travel. But the ultimate crash, I suppose, in the end of the film is my, uh, is, is my ability to, to even make a documentary about Moose Jaw. I mean, there are sto so many stories to tell, it's just uh, almost impossible to, to do them all. And ultimately, all I was able to do was to really tell my own story, which I think in many documentaries is um, one of the things that is inevitable. The filmmaker is essentially telling his or her own uh, story about the subject. I think it's important in, uh, in new kinds of documentary to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And you certainly do, because you, you play a role. I mean, we don't see much of you, but your parents, I mean, part of the film is done as a slideshow, where your parents are commenting on pictures of you as a boy, pictures of Moose Jaw, you know, in, in the days when it was a different kind of town. Yes, um, I think that's, um, I think people are, are interested in, in the, uh, the personal aspect of the lives of, of ordinary Canadians, and uh, it, um, I think when, uh, when we try to gloss over that, uh, films don't have the credibility that they might otherwise have. Um, but yes, I, I do use uh, stills from, um, from uh, my past and uh, pictures of Moose Jaw in the present with my parents, as you say, commenting on the soundtrack in the background. Do you know Rick Hancock's any better now that you've made this film? <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I think uh, I think I uh, I think I do, um, but um, uh, I also know that I probably won't make another film like this one again. <laughs> yes, I can give a g yeah. I bet after 14 years you want to give it a rest. Well, thanks for talking to us today, Rick. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Bye bye. Bye. And still to come, keeping.